Just give her the floor. So Ixi will talk about Pearl and the Wet, a love story. So, um, so I'm a bit sick, um, which means I might cough, so you might get a, a good mixture of uh, yelling and, and coughing. So um, I apologize for that. Um, and I kind of finished the slides a little while ago. So is there uh, any way to turn off the lights? Uh, can we do it for the video? Or could you? No? There's enough light, come on. Any? Nothing? Uh, Fuck it, yeah. never mind. Can we, can we not? Yeah. No, 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 it's cool. It's, it's alright. It's alright. Fuck it. Um, so yeah, and I might, I might curse a bit uh, if anyone has a problem with it. I do believe that's the fucking door. Um, <laughs> so, that's, that's how I talk. Alright, so uh, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, Pro on the web. How many people here have done uh, Pro programming in the web? Nice. How many people have done it in recent years? Okay, I want you to name some of the things that you use, like frameworks or or deployment methods, stuff like that. You were raising your hand and then yeah. we had to come up with something uh, or lower it, not you. Next. CGI.pm. CGI.pm. <laughs> anyone else still, is anyone still using CGI.pm? Yeah, I'm forced to. Fantastic. All right, good. CGI. We're, we're yeah. setting up a bonfire later. We'll put all, <laughs> all of your code in there. Um, so the, the idea, what I wanted to do was to show you a bit of how advanced Perl, modern Perl looks like on web today. And not the old shit like CGI PM, which you should never, ever fucking use for anything at all, ever. So, um, let's see. Uh, I want to start with a little bit of history that I'm probably going to completely destroy and, and uh, present horribly. We used to have uh, CGI PM came out in 1995, I believe, and it was a, it was a really, really good time for Perl, okay, because Perl had CGI PM and that was the best and quickest way to write a dynamic website in Perl. So a lot of people started using Perl. It wasn't used for just backend stuff, it was used to create website. So all the dynamic websites were in Perl. And then we, we had uh, Mod Pro that hooked up into Apache, and and then you had all the uh, in process uh, support for that, and it was faster than CGI PM, so we kind of used that. And this is pretty much where Perl left off, and that was it for a really, 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 really long time. A lot of people moved on. Some new languages usurped the role of web programming, and we kind of you know stepped back, and this is good, and we're fine. But that wasn't true because the, like, they're both kind of shitty. And uh, with time, we realized this. The more we had different roles that developed. When CGIPM came out, it was, you could programmatically create HTML. That was amazing. And then we realized no one should do that, ever. But it was amazing when we had it. Um, you had uh, PHP that came out with, we're going to inline code in the templates. Like, oh my god, this is so new and amazing. And then we realized this is stupid. We shouldn't ever do that. So then, you know, PHP is like complete monster where you open a tag only to not run HTML, but instead run code that will render HTML from a template. So <clears throat> we kind of learned with this, but Pro stayed behind. We were kind of comfortable with this. And we developed small components like template systems and stuff like that, but we, nothing really changed much. So in 1995, this was the state. Everything was awesome, so fucking awesome. But in 2014, it is really stupid. <laughs> it is dumb. It is fucking dumb. And this is how we look like nowadays. If, if you look at, at CGI PM and, and Mod Pro these days, right? it just looks stupid. So I'm going to try and present uh, PSGI and Plaque. Um, this is how, I don't know if you can read this, uh, it says uh, the bad artists imitate, the great artists steal, it was, it used to be Pablo Picasso and then Banksy took it and then I took it. Um, look up Banksy, he's a really good graffiti artist. And uh, PSGI and PLAC, PSGI is a new protocol that we have actually for a few years now and PLAC <coughs> is an uh, implementation for it including adapters and, and reference implementation and stuff like that. And we're going to take a look at that today. And I don't know how long it's going to take. I haven't practiced this talk at all. I just finished the slide. So um, let's see. First of all, the question is why. OK? Why would you use PSGI as a protocol? It's a single protocol. 
unlike having mod pro CGI fast CGI all these like versus like deployment uh, protocol versus actual server client protocols which CGI is kind of like half and half and uh, fast CGI which is half and half and mod pro which is also half and half PSGI is a single protocol between a server and a, and a client that supports many web servers pretty much any web server they implement it it supports many web frameworks and any web framework that supports it and it is very very simple to implement if you have a web server now and you want to support PSGI, it isn't a lot of code. <coughs> Very little. Which actually prompted more web servers to be written just for that. Same thing with web frameworks. If you have a, frame, uh, a framework that you wrote and you want to adapt to PSGI, it isn't a lot of code. It is very, very simple. But that means it will be supported on a lot of web servers. If you have now an application and you want to use uh, Apache, so you're using Mod Perl, and suddenly <coughs> you realize Wait, Apache sucks. I want to use Lighty. Now you can't use Mod Pearl anymore. And your entire application has to be rewritten. And then you rewrite it and then you realize actually Lighty kind of sucks too. I want to use Nginx. But then you realize Nginx has a problem with a specific edge case. So you want to use Micro WCI, which is a, another web server. But that doesn't work. And you want to implement it in ProBal because you want to have access to reverse proxying within ProBal. But that, that doesn't work either. So you always have to readjust it to work on the web server that you want. And then you have code in which you want to use a, a certain web framework, but now you kind of want to lift it to a different web framework, but that, that one doesn't support fast CGI deployments. So now you're screwed again. And it's just really, really, really annoying. And PSGI fixes that. It supports advanced stuff like mounting, where you actually take another piece of code and add it in without you know, embedding the code inside your app. So you have two apps and then you mount them, one on top of the other in different paths. So now slash v2 goes to a completely different app with a completely different code base. Okay? And it supports that. It's really nice how you can tack on more and more stuff like plugins, but they're actually chunks of application code that you don't have to interact, that, that can interact when you don't have to copy paste them inside each other. And middlewares, which are actual plugins to the protocol itself that implements different parts that you want. For example, a middleware can sit on top of our request right before our request and handle authorization, or it can handle static assets, or it can handle um, expirations, or can handle user logins, or can handle cookies, or whatever it is you want. And then you take that middleware and you can use it in different applications that have <coughs> completely different code base it's the same middleware on top of it, on top of each and every one of those. Same piece of code. Someone wrote it, pushed it on CPAN, you can use it. That's it. That's really, really, really nice. And it has some more advanced features uh, like non-buffered input, where you get input from the server, from the client, and it's actually not being buffered, which is something that most web servers don't even do. But PCI supports it. Non-buffered output. Most web servers don't support non-buffered input. PSCI already supports it. So once you move to a server that supports it, it's supported. Your code doesn't change at all, which is really, 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 really fucking awesome. So <coughs> overall, it's, it really is a, a, a lot of success. But that's just a protocol. So we'll take a look at how it works and how to actually use it in practice. Who? So who uses uh, PSGI? First of all, web servers use PSGI. They implement PSGI in order to talk to whoever's on the other end. And whoever's on the other end, I'm not talking about the users, I'm talking about the other users, which is the developer, right? So you have an app, and you want to put it on a web server. So you're going to put it, and, uh, and uh, you're going to use PSGI, and the web server has to implement PSGI. Which means that the other user, the web framework, is going to have to implement PSGI as well. If you are a web framework, Supporting PSGI is phenomenally easy. I'm going to show it. And <coughs> what's called, I guess, Puritan programmers, which is people who don't want to use frameworks at all. Is, is anyone like that here? It's fine. It's all right. So there are some people who are accustomed to that. That's fine. Which means that you can write an application that basically uses PSGI as a protocol, and you don't have to use any framework, and it will work on any web server that supports it, which is a really, really growing number. And where could you see PSGI? 
that's the best one I could find for this. I don't. It just makes me laugh. Um, so um, Apache, Nginx, Lighty, MicroWSGI, all these support uh, PSGI. All the uh, big web servers. I don't know about IAS, but I don't consider it a web server per se. Um, it's hard to consider Microsoft products as like what they they're supposed to be. Um, so. All the big web servers support uh, WSGI, uh, PSGI. Starman, Twiggy, Corona, Riva, all of these are web servers that were written because of PSGI, because it's so easy to implement it that people said, you know what, fuck this, I can write my own web server. It would be really, really fast because if you've ever used Apache, it's slow as fuck because it is huge. It has every possible thing that someone ever thought about having to do with web bolted in. They tried to make those modules, but not really. It's it, even a stripped down Apache 2.2, 2.3, whatever version they have now, it's, it's, a, it's, it's huge, and it's big, and it's fat, and it's slow, and it's annoying. And if you take a look at Lighty, it's lighter, right? But, eh. And micro WSGI was actually written in order to support <coughs> WSGI from Python, which is why I actually used the great artist still, because we took PSGI from, from Python, where they had WSGI, and from Ruby, where they had Rack, which is the same thing. And micro uh, WSGI was actually written for that, but it supports PSGI as well. And it's really, really fast. But you know, it acts differently. So someone came up and wrote Starman, which is like a pre-forking, um, really advanced web server. There's Twiggy, which is actually written on an um, asynchronous event loop in Perl, which means that you could write application code that is asynchronous as well, and it will run on a web server that has its own loop already, and your code will enter that loop and will run asynchronously in the web server's loop which if anyone here has done asynchronous, that is awesome. That is amazing. To write a completely 100% asynchronous web application in a web server's event loop. That's it's pretty, pretty cool. And some of these actually use some C to, to get quicker and access and stuff like that. They speed up a bunch of shit. And uh, <coughs> it's really nice. Where else? Uh, web frameworks. So, um, Catalyst, Dancer, 1, 2, Web Simple, Modulicious, which was the first talk, if you were here for the first talk today, which is Convos, um, and M on 2, just for example. So, Catalyst, I think it's pretty much the only one that came from uh, a pre-PSGI period, and Dancer sort of, but it adapted really, really early, and <coughs> they changed to fit PSGI. Catalyst originally had a ton of small adapter engines to work on CGI, to work on fast CGI, to work on mod Perl, to work on this and on that. And that's the only reason you could have used Catalyst with any web server or with any deployment method because they worked really, really, really hard on allowing that. Most people haven't really used it. So these new ones were written because it was so easy now that I don't have to think about whether I'm running on CGI or whether I'm running on Apache or whether I'm running on fast CGI because it's, the CGI is stupid as a deployment method. But fast CGI is also stupid, but it's, it's at least consistent and persistent. So <clears throat> it's kind of, um, kind of annoying, but suddenly it's very simple, it's very easy, and, and those were written to accommodate that. <coughs> and of course, pure programmers, people who figure, fuck all of this, I'm going to write it myself. And we're going to see how, actually. So how does uh, PCI work? A server is given an application to run. Okay, If it's a server written in Perl, they will get a code reference in Perl. And it calls it with an environment hash. So it sends all of the HTTP environment to the code as a parameter. And then, whatever the application does, the server expects to get three things. <coughs> First of all, the HTTP status. 200, 300, 401, 404, 403, 500, whatever it is you want to indicate as a status, that's the first parameter you send back to the server as the application. 
He expects to get any headers, a list of pairs, content type, cookies, whatever else you put in headers, and the body itself, the content. <clears throat> Another option, if you don't know the content ahead of time, or you don't know the result ahead of time, <coughs> pardon, and um, you want to actually make it asynchronous, you can send back more code to run later, which is really, really nice. And then you free up that uh, piece of code in your application, and it gets run whenever the server wants it. And all of this can be wrapped with middlewares that implement whatever they want in between. Does anyone have any questions so far? Because you've been really fucking quiet. It's, kind of, it's really creepy. Nothing at all? Guy scratching his head? No? All right. Another guy scratching his head. It's really confusing because you go like this. OK. This is kind of an old, old, old graph. But it works the same way, just the names have changed a bit. And I'm, I'm really sorry about this. I'm going to read it. So there's Catalyst here, because it did actually exist back then. There's CGI, oh shit. There's CGI app, Jifty and Tatsumaki, which I don't think they're actually maintained anymore. CGI app is a really Im interesting case. We talked about being very uh, bolted down to a specific way of doing things. So CGI app was uh, <coughs> a framework to do uh, web programming in CGI more structured and not as shitty, okay? And it's really interesting because it only worked on CGI. If you wanted to use Mod Pro, which is faster than CGI, or less stupid than CGI, you're screwed. You can't do that. It's for CGI, because there's a protocol. And it doesn't interpolate, and doesn't work right with, um, with Mod Pro. There's a plugin for that. There's a plugin for that? Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. What if I want to use an Nginx? Probably not. Ah, oh, shit. All right. Uh, it's a so I guess I'm still right. There's a rewrite called PSGI application. There's a rewrite called? PSGI PSGI, application. yeah? Okay. So, but they, he didn't actually um, change it. I, I met Mark, he's a really nice guy. And he did actually change this to work with PSGI as well. And apparently there's a rewrite for it. Um, <coughs> so, Catalyst, CGI app, whatever it is that you have as a framework, uses, CG, uh, uses uh, PCI as a protocol. <coughs> Middlewares uh, can wrap the, uh, the PCI code reference. There's PLAC, this is PLAC handler, which is the adapter for the deployment protocol. So you have CGI, FastCGI, Apache, which is like the Mod Pro stuff. And these adapters handle all of that stuff for you. And then you can put it on any web server you want. So any web framework on any web server in any form, which is finally what we need. <coughs> All right, let's look at um, how BCI works. Love this picture. Um, so this is an example of a pure PSGI application. Fuck. All right, can you read this? Yeah. 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 Let's fuck. OK. So um, there's an app here, which is a code reference. As you can see, it gets environment hash ref as the first item in the parameters list. It actually doesn't get anything else. So you could do uh, my env in round brackets equals default uh, array. And you, get a then you send back a response to the server from this code reference. And the server is actually going to take this code reference, keep it, and then call on it with the environment every time it gets a request. So request comes in, it takes this piece of code, throws the environment at it, and goes like, all right, this is the request. Have at it. And then it expects this in return. And this is an array reference that has three items, OK? We talked about them. There's the status, headers, and content. Status here, 200. The list of headers here, which is actually only content type and text plane. I could just continue tacking on more pairs of, um, of headers. And the content also in an array, in an array ref, which is, <coughs> in, <coughs> sorry, in this case, hello world. Or you can just return any object, which is like AO handle. Let's take a look at the environment that we receive. Can anyone explain this line? You get extra points, try it. 
No one? Dom's request to sync data print. Thank you. PlackUp is a tool that comes with Plack, which is the implementation for PSGI. A set of tools, uh, the handlers, middlewares, whatever it is. And it comes with um, PlackUp, which allows you to take a piece of code, an app, <coughs> and run it on a server. Now, the server has to be a Plack enabled server and it needs to be Pro based. So, um, I can actually say, hey, PlackUp, here's an application code. Please run it on Twiggy, or please run it on Starman, or please run it on whatever. And in this case, what I did was, first of all, loaded another module called Data Printer. has uh, two namespaces. One is short, one is longer. If you don't know Data Printer, if you, who here uses Data Dumper? For shame, mostly you. So, <laughs> it's shameful. You should look up Data Printer, and you should use that instead. Coloring, ordering, uh, introspection, filters, yes. So no data dumper. So I'm loading data printer, um, and then I'm actually, instead of giving a file that has the application, I'm just giving it a string to run as the application. And in the string, I'm giving it a subroutine, and I'm, <clears throat> I'm using p from DDP to print out the first, um, the first parameter, which is basically show me the environment that I'm getting. <clears throat> I thought it'd be funny. This is how it looks. Can you read this? Because I had to reduce the font to put all of this in. So, all right. So you have here, I actually um, split those in two parts. First of all, it's the HTTP headers. So you have the accept, HTTP host, <coughs> the user, and you can see that I ran curl on this. So I basically did this, and then it started a web server. And the default here, PlackUp, if I don't give it a web server to run like Starman or Twiggy, which I also have to install, obviously, it will actually use <coughs> a default one, which is useful for you know development. It's not very good for performance, but it's really good for development. It's very simple. It's called HTTP Server PSGI. And what I did, what it did, PlackUp, it actually started HTTP Server PSGI, gave it this code to run whenever a new request comes in. And then what it did is curl localhost port the, the port they set it up with. I think the default is 5,000. And then what happened was that the application dumped into the terminal the environment. And then it was really upset because I didn't return what it expects to return as a, to, to get back as a response. So <coughs> we can see the environment. There's um, a bunch of headers here, HTTP accept, HTTP host, user agent, you can see my curl request here, path info. Uh, which is the request that I actually did, some path, query string, remote address, remote port, like all of these stuff. And there's the, the PSGI <coughs> headers, which actually tell me as a client, as a client, um, server client, that is a framework or a Puritan programmer, you can see that it tells me stuff about PSGI that would be really helpful for me. For example, <coughs> is the server that I'm using multi-process? Is it multi-threaded? Is it non-blocking? For example, we see that it supports streaming. Kind of weird for a development web server, but it does. It doesn't support um, non-blocking, which are two different things, interestingly enough. The URL scheme that it supports, what version of PSGI it implements. It's, uh, there's a few extensions to PSGI. <coughs> Some nice stuff, for example, uh, Um So there's what it supports, basically. And now, as a um, client, I can actually parse these, like the request URI, and I have the remote address, I can do whatever I want. And this is what a um, web framework will actually do. The problem is that if you use um, different servers and different deployment methods, first of all, you get it in differently. Second of all, you have to return a different response. With PSGI, it's always the same. It doesn't matter if you put it on CGI or FastCGI or ModPerl or on Nginx or on a Pro web server, you will always get this fucking thing, which is amazing. And the response that you get will always work everywhere. If you ever use CGI PM, you have to return two parts, and you have to exit with zero, or everything crashes. Um, I mean, the first part is the headers for the server, and then the second part is the uh, content for the user. And then what happens if you push it to fast CGI? I don't know that that doesn't work anymore. But if you put mod pro, we'll get the variables from mod pro. You actually need to use mod pro, which uses access to hook up to fucking hell. 
<laughs> Stuff like uh, stream support. How am I doing with time? Does anyone know what time it is? Yeah, 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yes. Um, 15 awesome. Alright, so um, stream support. You can have an app here, gets the environment, and instead of returning the data, we actually say, no, we will return a code and run this when you want the data. Because we want to exit this request, and maybe this uh, uh, code will actually get more stuff from somewhere else later. So we return a subroutine that will get a respond callback, mm -hmm. and then we can call it with the status, headers, and body. We can go one step further. What if we don't know what the body is, or we want to return it chunked, right? If it's streaming, we can do this. And then we can say, you know what? I'm going to call with status and headers. It will return a writer, and I'll just call the writer callback with content. I can just call it as many times as I want with more and more content until I'm done, then I close it. <coughs> Sorry. And if the server supports this, then the user will get it chunked and stream. If the server doesn't support it, it will still work, but it will be buffered. So it's, it won't be buffered, it will actually not be chunked. There's some subtleties to this. Um, but it, it will still, like the code won't crash. Right? And if you throw in a different web server, it still won't crash. If you throw in a third web server, it will probably crash because that might have been like a really shitty web server that you shouldn't, no, it shouldn't crash. So, um, some more stuff and how, so, I kind of finished the slides back there uh, until like about 40 minutes ago, an hour ago, and um, I guess that something was missing, and what I figured was that after you've seen all this, you go like, all right, I guess that's nice. What do I do now? So if I want to start, and I want to throw away my CGI code. Who was that with the CGI code? <laughs> okay. So you look at that and go like, well, I want to throw my CGI code out of the window. What do I do except like have a, a bunch of terms and, and, <clears throat> and ideas of, oh my god, there's a new thing that is better. How will my app actually look like nowadays? So I wanted to give an example of every web framework, but I, I didn't have the time and the internet wasn't working, so I decided to give a, an example from something that I know, which is Dancer. <coughs> I'm using Dancer 2 here as an example. Uh, it's a project that I uh, maintain, I help maintain with a, um, a group of core developers and a huge group of community developers <coughs> and like awesome people. And this is how an app in Dancer 2 looks like. You have... <coughs> Your <clears throat> my app uh, pro module used answer two. You get a bunch of syntax, a DSL for writing new stuff, and it works using roots where it's not um, it's not like uh, namespace matching where there's the directory and then a subdirectory and then a subdirectory and then a file and then a subroutine and then it finds it by the path. Instead, you just say this is the path that I want to run. Get slash. I want a get request to slash to do this subroutine. That's all there is to it. And then here I use the template keyword that says render a template. The template is called index. And here are parameters that I want you to send to the template they will use. I give it a name as a key, and the value is actually from the parameters, fetch me the user key. This will actually, <coughs> the answer will actually parse the PSGI environment and put everything in a hash that you can access using a keyword called params. That's it. So, okay, you wrote your application in Dancer 2 or, or in Modulicious or Catalyst or whatever it is you want. And now you want to be able to deploy that and hook that up to a web server, right? <coughs> Having the, the app is not enough. So you write an app PSGI file. And the app PSGI file actually generates a code reference that bundles up all of this logics because that's what PSGI says. So, <coughs> If you use Dancer 2 <coughs> and you use your app, you can use Dance Keyword that you just imported from Dancer 2 to bundle up every application that Dancer knows about. Because you used your app, it will know about your application as well. <coughs> and then we'll bundle all of this up, and this Dance code, actually you can use Start, um, will generate, this one really, this one here, will generate a code reference and that code reference will have a bunch of dancer code that parses the environment, that generates the return code for it, the return response with the status and with the content and everything. All what we talked about will be generated from this dance. Like I could actually do my app equals dance. But we will end the code with this. 
and that's good, but that doesn't solve that uh, doesn't solve how to um, interact with the server yet, right? We don't even have the server. So uh, before we get to the server, here's another example of using middlewares, where we want to have our app, but we want to use HTTP passwords, right? Because we're setting up an nginx and nginx doesn't support HTTP passwords, as far as I know, at least by core. Um, so we want to use a middleware that will parse HTTP password and before it runs our code, because remember application code is always the slowest. Application code is always the slowest. So we don't want to run the application code right away. We want to actually use some uh, um, middleware to fix it before the application code. There's a middleware for um, HTTP password. So we can use something called Clack Builder. Remember I said Clack is like a bunch of utilities for handling PSGI stuff. <clears throat> and Plaque Builder gives us a keyword called Builder. So we can say, generate one big code reference that will include a bunch of stuff in it. <laughs> Applications and middlewares. And now we give it, um, I actually think it's in order. So <clears throat> it's in order. So um, enable the middleware that we want. This route should be translated to Plaque Middleware Auth HTTP Password. And here's the file that we have for the HTTP password. These are all parameters to this. Enable doesn't know about them. It just takes whatever is after the name and just passes it on to the middleware itself. And then we call our dance from here. And because we did use dance, we'll actually pick that up as well as another application, as the application, so it's fine. What happens with Builder is that it builds one big code ref that translates the PSGI environments that were sent and the HTTP um, headers that were sent and will decide whether to call this or that. In this case, there is no if. It actually calls HTTP auth HTTP password and HTTP password would let it know if it should continue on with the request. And if HTTP password says, you know what, this request is fine, then it will call this code reference with the request and then our code gets run, and we don't have to care of that. And now hooking up to the web server. I'm running Starman as a web server, which is a pro-based, pre-forking, high performance, awesome sauce. I'm using Ubic as a service manager. It came from Yandex. It's really, really, really nice. And it's uh, pro-based, LSB compliant, because every other daemon that you ever wrote sucks. And this one is the only one that provides you automatically with a service manager and daemons that are LSB compliant, very simple to use. This is how my app will look in Ubic. This is like etc, init, d, whatever. <clears throat> and you can actually set up a script in etc, init, d that will do this. I'm using Ubic service plaque, new, give it the server that I want, Starman, give the app, uh, the app PSGI file, which I'll actually run. It will require it, get the code reference that was done there in the last, um, in the last line and use that for the web server, so it runs that every time it gets a request. There's some <coughs> logging here, where to put the Ubic log itself, where to put standard out and standard error. The user, so it will uh, change to that user, because you should always do that. And the command itself um, for running it. Actually, I'm not sure. Oh, the uh, current, I can't remember this. The current working directory, so where should it serve stuff from? Which is the uh, directory index in, Directory index? No, it's a. Uh, sorry? I can't hear you. Document yes, yeah, document root. Thank you. I haven't worked with Apache for so long. Thank God. All right. Um, a different way of doing this, if you don't know Starman or if you don't want a pro server, you can run Nginx as a reverse proxy, for example, port 80. And then you can run Starman on a different port, bound to 127.001, or, you know, colon, colon, one. And then you can figure out Nginx to throw all the requests either by domain or whatever other characteristic you have, and then it throws it back to Starman as a reverse proxy. And then suddenly you have a web server in Perl running Perl code and a Perl app and a reverse proxy calling to it. And you can have multiple Perl applications based on different ideas and different, um, different companies, different projects of the same company, whatever, on the same server, each running in a different port, in a different dedicated web server, and all of those getting routed from a reverse proxy. Or you could use Nginx directly to the app using uh, the PSGI interface for Nginx. There's so many ways of doing this. This is actually the one that I recommend the most. Because you have like the most control over this. And I can run 
um, on one port Starman it, with one app, and on another port, a different uh, web server like Twiggy, which is asynchronous, working with asynchronous code on a different port with a different app on the same server with Nginx on 80 routing to the right place. It's like the best thing you could do, I, in my opinion. And I'm always right. Uh, I wanted to give an example with WebSimple. This is how it looks like, your app in WebSimple. Um, dispatch request, and then you get a sub, and you decide it's a get, and then you return the PSGI response itself. WebSimple says, fuck it, we're going to stay simple, so we're just going to make you return the stuff back. When you run with the answer the template keyword, it generates not just content, but it actually generates the entire response properly in PSGI, so you can do this. Um, there's a regular sub, which will be the default, and that will return 5. 405 for method not allowed, whatever. Modulicious, this is Modulicious Lite, very similar to Dancer, a bit longer. Uh, get slash, and there's a uh, context variable, and foo, and you call parameter, and then you can render with some text or whatever it is you want. Amon2 also exists. You use Amon2 Lite, and then you can do a get, and another context variable, and then you call render on pretty much. Uh, the same thing, and this is the beautiful part. Web frameworks only become syntax now. That's all they are, and that's amazing. When you started web, frameworks were the way to do it, and they were bound to how to deploy it, and nowadays there's just syntax. It will work on anything. That's fantastic. I think that's about it. Thank you. <laughs> is anyone brave enough to ask a question? I yes. Question. Those middleware, so I've uh, used like a bit. But don't you run the risk then to program a whole app in middleware and end up with the Yes, same you do. Again? There is one person who actually decided to do almost everything in middleware. The nice thing is that he created a bunch of middleware that we can use also. <laughs> Which, hey, through software, open source. But then again, when the next best thing comes, uh, Goes along, you start with PSGI or Flack. Well, because everything is middleware, so you have to rewrite it. You don't have to rewrite it, you can just hook it in. It's PSGI, you just hook in another middleware, and hook in another middleware, and hook in another one, or take that one out, put it as a mounted code, whatever you want. It's, it's like Legos now, it's amazing. Uh, another question? That guy. Does it replace completely in well, the thing is this. There is uh, a confusion between a deployment method protocol and the framework protocol. So when you write with mod Perl, do you actually use mod Perl to fetch parameters and call stuff, or do you use mod Perl as a deployment method alone? You know the difference? So it can replace it completely as the, the, the framework. But you can still deploy it on using mod Perl on Apache. But uh, does it implement uh, Apache filters, for example? Yeah. Yes. Oh, could you use the uh, filters? Uh, I think you could. I, uh, I'm pretty sure you could. I'm pretty sure you could. <coughs> Sorry, but I think that's, that's like the problem that we have to begin with. You're tied to Apache. And the reason you would want to use this is to be able to get out of it if you decide to. So one thing, all right. So if you're talking about how to migrate to PSGI when you have an application already written mod Pro or I don't know, say PS, uh, say uh, CGI, just an example. So um, what you could do is actually mount a s certain paths on code that is PSGI, or keep the entire application as PSGI and mount certain uh, code paths as the mod Pro stuff. You could do that. You can run like a mod Pro on Apache, and then say, well, these parts actually go to Starman or whatever to run those, or do the opposite, where you have Nginx going to uh, Starman, and the, the app PSGI says, well, these code paths actually are mounted to the Apache that's sitting here, because we need that in mod Pro yet, or still. So there's, there's ways. I'll be happy to explain, to give examples later. Anything else? Yeah, do we have actually more? There's the last one. One last one question. One. More. Nothing. Amazing. Silence. All right. Yes. Are there any other implementations besides Plug? Um. 
Clang is actually just a bunch of adapters and uh, tools. So none of those tools, no, no one thought that those tools needed to be rewritten, mm -hmm. and no one wrote new handlers because the current handlers exist and they do very well. So that's all we need from it. But if you if you find that the uh, um, handler to say mod pro in Clack is wrong, you could write a different handler, I guess. <coughs> but it's very, it's very small code, just uh, handler and small tools, and that's it. That's Clack. Yeah, Can sure. You manage HTTPS with it. Um, sure. It's it doesn't care if it's HTTP or HTTPS. It's just a uh, it's it's words. It's a language, so you can yell it, or you can talk, it, or you can whisper it, but it's the same words. That's it. Thank you.